UK universities have their backs against the wall. Funding is tight and competition is rife. Money is the problem and the solution at the same time. A sustainable future needs planning. World-class research, flexible teaching space, attractive campus fabric and maintenance must all be balanced to keep higher education on track. In this film, we'll be traveling to six projects where higher education institutes have made the best of some quite unpromising old structures to revitalize the campus using the fewest possible resources. London South Bank University challenged designers to create a vibrant student center in a loading bay area that was the dark undercroft of a concrete slab block. This project is about transforming space. It used to be an undercroft. It was just used for service and car parking, so it's forgotten space. And it was quite rugged concrete which we've kept exposed, but we just cut open some holes and got light down into it. By cutting this big hole in the floor slab and getting a whole new staircase up to it, it's part of a circulation route. People come here all the time now. This is a whole new roof light that we've created, and it was relatively cost effective. We kept the main structural elements and just took out the slab above the concrete frame. We didn't comply with any BRIAM criteria because it's an existing building. We're not using hardly any new materials apart from new glazing externally, um, and there's no plant equipment here because we're just, or very little plant equipment because we're borrowing plant from adjacent buildings. And I think when you're working with an old building like this, it is quite interesting at where you stop the demolition and start the new build and how new and old work together. We've replaced the cars by elements of furniture, if you like. Further down the road, a listed pub and two Georgian terraces are being regenerated as an enterprise centre, also for London South Bank. LSBU's enterprise centre comprises 17 Grade 2 listed Georgian buildings dating from the 1820s. The university acquired these buildings in the late 1990s, many of which had been empty for decades. The terraces form some of the last remaining Georgian buildings in North Southwark, and, and really the Georgian townscape planning is the important part of them. The approach we've taken with these existing buildings is to limit the amount of new build to the minimum and what is more sustainable than reusing existing buildings. I think the challenges with existing buildings is always twofold. Firstly is understanding them. I'd actually recommend spending adequate time and resource. One can never do enough uh, investigation work. The second probably is to engage early with planners statutory consultees, other interested parties. With some imagination, even the most prosaic of commercial boxes can be converted into high-tech research and creative art institutes. The University of Warwick scooped up a distribution depot to add to its portfolio. I doubt if this building was ever envisaged for any other use other than a large storage depot. It was originally a depot on the former Science Park and uh, about seven years ago, the building became empty. It had been empty for some time. The property, frankly, was bought at a snip. We bought a lot of volume. That, that was the purpose, was to get lots of space. And uh, it gave us a pretty, pretty broad canvas in which to play with. I mean, it really allowed us to do double height spaces, very large spaces for the nuclear uh, NMR machines. And that particular part, the NMR suite, is, uh, is now regarded as a world-class facility, certainly the best in Europe. For the future, I think we're going to have to look at buildings which can be incredibly flexible and adaptable. Buildings we're keeping 50, 60 years, um, we've really got to expect two or three times during that lifespan, the purpose will change. Over in Dublin, a new higher education quarter is being planned around a former mental asylum and prison. Dublin Institute of Technology's vision is to connect education, culture and community with a blend of old and new architecture and landscape. DIT has been spread throughout the city for a long time and like many colleges in the same situation look to consolidate on one site. Most colleges end up moving out of town. We were very lucky that in this case there happened to be a 70 acre site right in the heart of the city. It had a long history as a prison and mental hospital and changing practice has meant that the site was effectively disused for the last 20 years. So there's a selection of buildings left of old protected structures dating from 1820 onwards up to 1900 that are all being reincorporated into the plan. They add a certain gravitas and they'll, they'll act as a foil to 
the majority of the development which will be modern buildings. In our uses we specifically said we'd like these buildings to have a, a more public use, not to be tied away as offices, so we intend them to form part of the library complex, the student hub complex. And sometimes the place you like best is just a bit shabby, a bit dilapidated, comfy sofa as opposed to the shiny steel and chrome. The master plan was built up from viewing this as an urban quarter rather than viewing it as an academic college. We have a busy main street going through it. The intention is that the academic buildings, but also that retail and cafes will feed off that. The student housing runs right along the street. Residential units then will get the views over the pitches, over the city to the mountains beyond. Tourism has replaced industry in Venice. Venetian universities face a choice whether to flee to the mainland or stay and help support city life. The typical style, INUAV, chose to reoccupy a former cotton mill in the Docklands area. C'è un problema a Venezia che è questo. È, è difficile, dovendo, decidendo di restare e insegnare a Venezia, non trovi facilmente dei luoghi in cui, in cui stare. E gli spazi più disponibili da molti anni a questa parte. Sono proprio gli antichi edifici industriali, antichi risalgono alla fine dell'Ottocento, primi anni del Novecento, quando Venezia era, era una città industriale, contrariamente a quello che è oggi, e allora noi eravamo alla ricerca disperata di uno spazio, perché il numero degli studenti in pochi anni era cresciuto da poche centinaia ad alcune migliaia. Quindi era una, avevamo una ragione impellente, dovevamo necessariamente trovare qualcosa e abbiamo trovato le cose più facili. <ride> Questi edifici industriali sono come gran parte degli edifici storici di Venezia vincolati. Non possono essere demoliti, si può solo intervenire ristrutturandoli all'interno. Quindi da questo punto di vista non ci sono stati grandi problemi. Qualche problema c'è in questo senso che le altezze sono spesso eccessive, però le abbiamo utilizzate creando dei piccoli soppalchi. Questo è possibile perché questo era un edificio industriale. Gli edifici industriali fine 800, primo 900 sono perfetti per fare questo perché sono grandi stanzoni liberi che puoi ritagliare. È evidente che non tutti gli spazi possono essere usati per tutte le cose e questo diventa una sfida anche, una sfida di come intervenire col nuovo nel vecchio. Non è detto che questo sia un vincolo negativo, può essere anzi un vincolo, un vincolo. Può essere una grande opportunità di fare dialogare insieme linguaggi, tecniche costruttive diverse, con grande libertà. Central St. Martins was a disparate arts community now fused into one main structure in London's King's Cross. The new college occupies space between former rail workshops and is fronted by an old grain store. When you're approaching it, it has enormous power about it. I mean, it's a very plain vernacular building that was clearly built for something very specific, in this case, collecting and storing grain. So when you come through that and then into this extraordinary crossing, which is really of a, a sort of cathedral scale, is again an, another kind of sort of power of, a, of an internal, external space, immediately has a sense of excitement. We had about I think somebody said 11 front doors. Having effectively one front door changed the college for everybody, um, the estate staff included. The advantages we feel of being here in what is the biggest development site in Europe is extraordinarily exciting. We are the first occupants of this development. Rather than a new build which perhaps would struggle to determine its identity, this has an identity that is connected to the history of this site. Coming here feels as if we've come out into the open air, into the light, and we're visible to each other, but we're also much more visible to the outside world. We can see in these and many other examples that the adaptive reuse of existing structures can not only be practical, but fuses the past and the future in a way that is appealing and evocative. Universities have adopted old buildings for hundreds of years. It's a fine tradition and a model of sustainability.